Hey everybody, it's Brennan from Garage Gym, guys. Very exciting day. Just got my Rogue Matador in the mail with the hanger. I want to do a quick unboxing for uh, you guys and give you a little bit more info on why I ordered it and why I ordered this particular one. I have a, a dip bar right now that I made. It looks a lot like the Rogue Matador, um, but when you, and it got me by, I'm not gonna say that you need to buy the top of the line stuff um, at all at once because it's, it's a tough journey for anyone that's building a garage gym, especially in these times. But it's been good to me, it's fine, but I got to a point where I needed a little bit more stability. I needed something that uh, would give me a little bit more confidence that wasn't uh, wriggling around under my weight because uh, I'm 250, so um, I s waited, was patient, stepped it up, and uh, went with the Rogue product. So just a quick, a quick breeze over of the Rogue products in general, you're gonna get strong steel, you're gonna get high grade steel, you're gonna get a good coating, now you will wear the coating out, you're gonna, the other thing you're gonna get is the engineering, so that's a little bit what you pay for with a higher cost Rogue product. The fitment is more predictable, so things just work better together. When you get a, um, an off brand such as Titan, there are things that will be fine, but when you need something that functions, that needs alignment, that has to interact with other parts, that level of quality control and precision just is not as high as much as Rogue. Now there's probably some other um, good products out there uh, that just aren't as mainstream, and I'm, I'm not saying Rogue's the best, but the best mainstream ship to your door point and click products are in fact Rogue. So this is included uh, in that opinion, and it's the Rogue Matador when it goes on the strip, when it goes on your rack, it's gonna be a very predictable, uh, confidence-inspiring piece of equipment. So, I'm just gonna open this, this beast here. So one of the things I like about Rogue is their packaging is so damn simple. And who doesn't get excited with a Rogue box shows up on the porch when you get home. So, look at that, we got a little instruction. Actually, it's just a, it's just a picture. Um, so the Rogue does come with this. I don't think all dip bars, correct me if I'm wrong, but all dip bars come with this, uh, this feature. So if you, uh, if you order one from somebody else, you might have to purchase uh, this sucker. And when you're trying to deal with, remember I was talking about uh, precise um, interaction between all the products, you don't wanna have one of these that's too loose, too big, where you're just finagling it to to put a, a fair word to it. I've heard horror stories from Titan stuff where um, the holes are not quite aligned and then you're dealing with that misalignment, that play, and then the play on the rack. And it's just, it's kind of one of those things, uh, it's kind of like we say in uh, mountain biking, buy once, cry once, because you won't think about it after that. So you're gonna get a nice coated uh, piece of good old American steel here. Now what I like about the Matador is I like the, the taper. Some people will say that the taper um, doesn't work well with their, their uh, ergonomics or whatever, their, their body geometry, but personally for me, I like it a lot because I can, I can come all the way back on it and match more of my shoulder width. And uh, I can also come up and do a little bit of a partial rep where it focuses more on the tricep and I can pinch them into the sides nicely. So I don't really have a problem with, uh, with the widths. I like it. The next thing is I like the diameter of the bar. Some people will say that it's not quite right. It's either too thin or too, or too fat. Um, personally, I feel like it's just right because I, I don't actually grip it. I, I tend to um, move my hand and just position it to where it makes my shoulder function correctly. So to give a little idea of that is um, I'll, I'll come to the width that works for whatever uh, exercise I'm doing and I kind of just put my hands you know wherever they need to be. I, I have a kind of a loose grip. I don't feel like I'm gonna fall off the damn thing. So the next thing is you can put this on a 3x3 three three strip or I can't remember all the dimensions of the 3x3 three three is what we use here. I think there's also an infinity 2x3 but you can put this on the strip on the wall and you can also put it on your rack. So uh, it gives you that freedom 
And, and that reliability that you're going to get from Rogue with things like that, it, they, the freedom's like guaranteed. So um, you're not having to say, well, it kind of works on that one, but use the third hole. You know, we've all been there. We've had a buddy who's got the Titan Fitness equipment, and uh, it's just brutal having to deal with that. So when you've got a buddy over here and you're trying to get your, your, uh, your workouts figured out, um, I like to be able to put it on a strip, or if I'm in his way, he's doing something dynamic over there, I can pull it over to the rack and, uh, you know, and make it happen over there. So the other thing, if you're gonna get this shipped to your house, I think you may as well get the hanger. So one thing for a garage gym guys uh, that we speak about a lot is space is at a premium. I like to keep my garage clean, neat and orderly. So I try to get as much off the floor as I can. And that's why I ordered this hanger. So, Yes, it is an overpriced piece of steel, but buy once, cry once, because you're gonna use it so often and you'll be so thankful you got it, or you're gonna end up buying it and ask yourself why you didn't just buy it earlier. So to give you a quick preview of how the hanger works, very simple, it doesn't take up much room on the wall. It's got that fancy uh, branding, which um, like it or love it. So this is, the, this is the extent of your exposure off the wall. It's very compact. I believe this is probably a foot. So it's very compact. So if you have to pull a vehicle in the, the garage, it's, it's no factor. Um, everything's hanging on the wall. And uh, this is just, this is one less thing you want uh, your kids or your wife to walk out and hit their head on because you hung it six feet high on the rack and they didn't see it. So the hanger is probably, um, it's, it's, it should come with it. I don't know why you would, uh, why you'd not want it. So I'm gonna show you where I will probably use this thing most often, and that'll be off the front of my rack. So I'm gonna place it here. I'm gonna place it a little high and let it fall down. There we go. Again, I like to put it high because I like to keep a relaxed lower body on it. That's why I like, I like the ability to work with the entire rogue rack. For comparison, this was my first attempt at a matador. It was fun to make. Um, I loved it. It's very close uh, to the to the actual Matador itself, um, but there's just a couple things about it that that uh, bothered me enough to where I I always knew I would I would end up upgrading. When you make anything out of steel and you weld it, you need to clamp it very well. And having something like this, um, such an odd you know multi multi you know, axis uh, piece of equipment. Um, you know, it's not all made in 2D. There's a lot of clamping that was, that didn't happen because I just didn't have the means to do it. And if you're gonna invest in something like that, then you're probably not even gonna be watching this video because you got enough money to buy whatever you want. So that's what you get from Rogue is they make them for a living. So things are very true. They're, uh, they're repeatable. Uh, all the holes, like I said, will be lined up. So what happened with this particular one that bothered me is this opening wasn't consistent because I cut it out of, a, I cut the side off the tubing, but when I welded it, it kind of clamped in and it was a pain to get on and off and to adjust on my strip. So that was the first thing is it just wasn't as versatile as we moved it around. And because of that, also because of that clamping, um, condition that happened after I welded it, I didn't feel comfortable putting on the rack because as much as I know my rack's gonna get beat up, I didn't need to be scraping off like playing card side pieces of, of paint because this thing's got uh, a big, you know, d deformity to it. So that was the first thing is I just wanted, I wanted uh, some pieces that worked better together. Um, the second thing is it, it wasn't as sturdy as the Matador. So, this does have a little play to it, left and right, but mine had a pretty serious wiggle to it. And um, it was just the nature of, of this thing just being slightly cockeyed. And once you have something that's a little off balance and you're moving with it, it just, it just perpetuates. So um, yeah, this is the old girl. Like I said, I'm proud of it, but um, you know, the standards have raised a little bit and this is cheap enough to where it wasn't really a big deal to upgrade. So that's it on the Rogue Matador. That's why I love it. I think you should just get it the first time. Don't mess around with um, going with uh, somewhere else and having to buy it twice. As always, like, share, subscribe, follow us on YouTube, check back with us for uh, new podcasts wherever you get them. 
and uh, happy lifting. Mm -hmm.